Radical Hindu leader publicly assassinated in India. A right-wing Hindu leader has been shot dead in broad daylight in the northwestern Indian state of Punjab. The 58-year-old uh, Suntir Suri, head of the fundamentalist religion religious group Hindu Shiv Sena, was shot dead while participating in a protest outside the temple uh, Gopal, Gopal Mandir in the city of Amritsar. Sandeep Singh, the local shop shopkeeper who shot Siri, was immediately arrested and police seized the licensed weapon used in the crime. Local reports said that Suri was uh, protesting outside the temple Gopal, Gopal Mandir near... Uh, uh, sorry, protesting outside the mandir against its management for the alleged blasphemy of Hindu deities. Before the incident took place, Suri was seen engaging in an argument with the management of the temple over the alleged desecration of idols. He was live on Facebook showing footage of some Hindu idols as he exclaims that, that they were shamelessly dumped in the garbage. We will not tolerate such sacrilege, even if it is by fellow Hindus, said Suri during his live stream. According to the reports, Suri collapsed after five shots were fired at him. He was immediately taken to a hospital but succumbed to his injuries. Suri had been accused of derogatory and blasphemous comments against the Sikh community in the past, which may have provided the motivation for this attack. Yeah. I mean, I, I was right. This guy's a fasci. How does what I explained Wait. make him a fascist? Like, he's a right... First of all, he's right-wing, so that's already enough. Uh, no, Armin, you know that's not true. I <laughs> no. hate it when you say that. <laughs> okay, okay, I will say that. <clears throat> he's a... Okay, so... Can you provide some context? Like, so he was there, like telling people that he, they they were disrespecting Hindu goddesses. God so he goddesses. is a, a like a Hindu fundamentalist who was in front of this other temple, basically saying that this temple was throwing away Hindu idols. This is my understanding of things based on the reporting. And mm. then another guy came in and just shot him dead. That's seemingly unrelated to the original reason why he was there, which was to do with Hindu idols being in the trash can or something. So this guy that assassinated him was from the Sikh community. And mm. the- he just randomly showed up there. He had, had nothing to do with either him or the temple. He, he didn't like... seem, this is my understanding based on reporting, because there's a lot of details that doesn't make a lot of sense. He seemed to have not been involved with the, the reason why this guy was disputing with the local temple. But this guy has had run-ins with the Sikh community in the past. And the guy that assassinated him is from the Sikh community. Now, we don't really know what the actual motivation was at this point. But people are saying that, well, okay, after this happened... He received a lot, the murderer received a lot of praise from Sikh extremists, basically. And there was, there's a Sikh group that is a Khalistani separatist group that has offered to pay for all of the legal fees of this murderer. And I even found a video of him being, the murderer being taken away in a police van and people are throwing flowers at him wow. like Pakistani blasphemy culture style. Amazing. So that was actually kind of what was most worrying to me and was for, in terms of the story is how the murderer has received a lot of support. And it was kind of like another example of this like the the blasphemy culture of pakistan kind of being exported into india we're getting we're getting the muslims and the hindus killing each other now the sikhs are joining in when can we expect the christians to step up i don't think God ever. damn it no okay so this guy he's you has been described as a radical hindu leader Mm -hmm. Why is he described as a radical Hindu? Just to be clear, so that you don't. Mind. I mean, he's a fundamentalist. 
okay, so why are you telling me that I shouldn't be calling him a fascist? He's a fundamentalist. Being a fundamentalist right is not itself being a fascist. Yeah, but if you're a fundamentalist, right wing Hindu religious person, like how far, how much more do you need for it to be a fascist? Okay, whatever. Okay, personally, um, because of my history, Armin, I want to see yes, I know actual policy positions that people are pushing for before I call someone okay. a fascist. That's really sure. important to me, especially okay. because of dumbass leftist commentators like Vosh literally just calling anyone who's a Republican a fascist. It's not helpful. It's actually he didn't call anybody. Everybody is. He's saying that the Republican idea. He says that Republicans are unknowingly feeding fascism. Anyways, but let me focus on this. But my point Why? is that when people use it as loosely as people as him use it, it actually is dangerous because they justify any form of violence against people that they paint with that label. And then they expand that label to include just about anyone that disagrees with them. Therefore, justifying physical assault or death against said people. Like, okay. that's really dangerous. I've been okay. in cultures and groups where this is the way that people see things and they justify violence towards people. I've seen people commit violence on others with that justification. So I, it, I take it very seriously that okay. you need to actually be having some policy positions or, or, you know, things that you're pushing for that actually are bent towards fascism besides just, Oh, you're just a general right winger. Well, how do you define fascism? I mean, that's a complicated question. That's actually really hard. Okay, because, <laughs> because based on my different, okay, based, based on how I define fascism, this guy fits that criteria. Okay. So if you have a different definition, then maybe he doesn't. Um, Oxymoron is saying, I kind of identify as a fascist too. It's well, a that doesn't spectrum. surprise anyone, Oxymoron. We I know, know Oxymoron. I, I also defined you as a fascist. So we agree. We've known that. you're a fascist for months now. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, Susanna, you called Oxymoron a fascist, see? But you I have good that. reason and proof, okay? <laughs> well, okay, here's another question. Um, this guy, why does he think, and why would a Hindu temple be throwing um, statues of Hindu gods and goddesses into the garbage? Yo, that's a good question. That was a whole angle of the story that I didn't even get into or understand because I was like, what the hell is even going on here? Yeah, he was <laughs> accusing another Hindu temple of throwing these in the trash. And so he's going to go after these, go after these people, even if they're Hindu, like in his own words. Yeah, see, Mr. is saying, I see, I see defining fascism as far right authoritarianism. Yeah. Exactly. So when I see any kind of radical far right, I'm like, yeah, fascist. Um, okay. GJ is saying off topic, but the effing YouTube super chat algorithm is frequently blocking my comments. And of course, the YouTube system only tells me to edit my takes. No info on what's problematic. Okay. Well, thank you again for all the super chats. We'll continue to highlight them. Thank you, GJ. Sorry about the confusion that is happening. Um, oh, people Silva, are saying that Hindutva is fascism. I know that Hindutva is fascism. Like I'm 100. Yeah, aware. so we agree. There we go. Thank you. So I was saying, AR is not democratic. If you want the market to go somewhere else, this is This is a dictatorship. Why? This is Why not a republic. It is a dictatorship of Susie. Okay. <laughs> Guys, people are saying to Susanna that Hindutva is fascism. Yeah, she agrees with that. But this guy is, well, she, I think, okay, let me defend Susanna, okay? Every time you see a Hindu radical right winger, that's not necessarily Hindutva, okay? That's we my do, whole point. Yes, okay. We do have far right Hindus who are not Hindutva, okay? Hindutva and far right Hinduism are not necessarily the same thing. They're, they often are, but not always, okay? So there's that. Um, and it's amazing. I'm telling that to Indians in the live chat. <laughs> See, guys, like people tell me that I don't understand things about India, but I'm informing you as a foreigner about your country that like these the Venn diagram doesn't completely match with each other. But this guy might be. Do you agree, Susanna? If this guy is Hindu, then he's a fascist. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. See, oxymoron. You've been called a fascist just because you're Hindu. I mean, right. 
I mean, he Moxie Moran is a fascist for a lot of other opinions. <laughs> true, true, true. 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 Uh, yeah. I don't know. Okay, I think contextually, for people to understand why I think this way, like I, people probably think this this is like a dumb thing to get stuck on, especially in this context. And like the likelihood is that this guy is was Hindufa and all this stuff, blah blah blah. But for me, look at his face. Like labeling people with these kinds of things is extremely consequential. Because the, the people who are in opposition to fascism, especially the further left you go, justify any and all means against who anyone that they deem fascistic. And this can get extremely dangerous because their whole mentality is that there are no bad methods, there are only bad targets. And this can threaten people's individuals lives over something that actually isn't as bad as it's being painted out to be like it can turn into just mob hysteria so quickly it could but just because some people could take it that far that doesn't mean we shouldn't call it fascism when we see fascism i know and exactly but from this guy this individual i don't know enough about his history to be able to say that responsibly okay i, I think see that's fair yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But in my books, I see radical and far right, and that's enough for me to check mark. You know, get the fascist definition. Okay, and when I see it, I want to call it as a, because I think a far right nationalism, okay, and far right ideologies is the right now as we're speaking the biggest danger to our planet. So if I call it fascism and people take it more seriously, I don't want to uh, uh, not just because some um antifa type have over misused it i don't want to lose that weapon against fascists just because you know some people overused it because fascists be fascists no but i want to prevent the overuse to the point that it loses all meaning but i'm not overusing it i'm using it on far-right radical people okay so i don't think i am overusing it i know but with this guy he's just being labeled radical radical in the media well, I'm just like, I don't know how Repu radical I am he really is. Okay, I'm just going based on Atheist Republic report. I'm just reading here that the guy is far right and a radical. So I'm just trusting your reporting on it. <laughs> it doesn't even say far right, it says right wing. Okay, but radical and right means that far right. Yeah. How could you not be. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm not going to get into that, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> potentially fascist are you happy <laughs> either way i'm not i'm not sad that he died i think that's fair to say somebody that thinks that somebody that goes out out outside of temples and that's his issue like he's protesting a temple because he found some like statues that might be in the garbage and is like raging against that like a lot of people in the live chat who know this guy are also saying like yeah this guy is a hate mother you know, it's a, it's a, no, I mean, so it's, it's, like, it's, it's dumb and stupid. Yeah, it's the dumbest thing in the world no, to worry about. Let's be clear. It's not just that. Apparently His priorities are messed up. No, it's not just about this. Like, uh, 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 I can't find it, but Bengali Hindu in the live chat was talking talking about this guy. I was like, yeah, this guy is like... Um, this guy is <laughs> I like this comment from Terrell's way. Come on, Susie. That ugly ass beard is a total giveaway. He's a fascist. <laughs> yeah, Darko is also saying fascism is going pretty strong. Yeah, guys, the world is becoming more and more dangerous because fascism, you know, I understand. I understand that some people have gone full on crazy with calling everybody that is like uh to the to the right of mao a, fasc a fascist okay i understand that's how, how bad it has gotten okay but at the same time okay dismissing like i'm not saying susanna you're dismissing it okay but like even republicans for example okay most of them are not fascists okay but republicans are actually putting united states in danger of a fascist takeover even if they're not fascist they are actually actively doing that. 
So if they're not fascists, they're complicit. So we could argue that later. I think you're being triggered. <laughs> I know, I know you don't like that. I know you don't like. It. I I I, it's, it, I see I, your point is valid. I know you have seen so many cuckoo people that have said so many crazy things. But I think it's important not to let this pe pendulum swing all the way back to the other side. Okay, fascism is a threat. Okay, countries that have gone under, like been taken over by fascism, sometimes it happened like a blink of an eye, without people realizing. Sometimes countries went from being extremely progressive to just a miscalculation by people about how big of a threat fascism was. And over weeks, sometimes overnight, the entire country was taken over by fascism. Okay? So it's important to be aware of that. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I see your point. Yeah. And I say that as somebody uh, whose country, okay, whose birth country Is was taken over. Is run by fascists was taken over by fascism because people didn't take that threat seriously. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Susanna in Ponder <laughs> Yeah. Oh, we get uh, I mean, I do, I do gen genuinely try to think about these things a lot. Yeah. See, uh, <laughs> um, good? Jim Holy is saying arm and calling Republicans abetting fascism is bringing me back to my SJW days. It really does taste like that, Armin. When you have state legislators actively, transparently telling their constituents that vote for us so we could change regulations in a way where Democrats cannot be elected. Okay, changing ID laws so that student IDs don't work, but like, um, what is it called? When like IDs you get for old age and stuff like that, those work. So because mm. you know, uh, when you draw the lines in a way that even though these are state legislators, they will redraw the map in a way that every federal election eventually will go to a Republican. Okay, you are. This is how. By the way, this is how. Adolf came into power, okay, through democratic means. Mm. And if you think your country is immune to that, just because a whole bunch of SJWs called everybody that says, hey, maybe this whole we're going too far. Like I was called a fascist because of I said because of things that I said that was not even racist, okay? But like, I know, I know that SJWs went that far, okay? So it's the, SJ, the biggest crime of SJWs and work people is that they make the threat of fascism feel like a joke because it is a threat. It is a real threat. And their lunacy has made it seem like it's not a real thing, but it is a real thing. We're going to super chat another super chat by GJ. He's saying hey, on fundamentalism, the prime directive of Christians is to love all people like you love yourself. Right? So wouldn't, true Christian fundamentalism be a good thing? Wait. Um, no, biblical Christian law is no. horrific. <laughs> no, it's, no, no, no. Actually, it's the opposite, GJ. The, the prime directive of Christians is to hate yourself and hate humans. The, the main message is that we are sinful creatures that don't deserve anything but hellfire. And that's why Jesus' sacrifice is considered to be a generous one. Because we're getting something that we don't deserve. We, we are all, all of us are fitting for, for eternal torture. And Jesus came and tortured himself because our sins and our dis our original sin that we were not even responsible for is so great that only through that punishment it could be cleaned. Uh, it could be cleansed. And th this act, this this fake love is actually not really love. It's forgiveness. The reason why it's forgiveness instead of love is because. Like Susanna or me are not deserving of love. 
we're deserving of forgiveness because we're just so filthy and disgusting and worthless that the only way that anybody could love us is for it, for us to first forgive us for being such filth. And that's the version of that's that's how Christianity sells sells us love. By first you have to humiliate and humble yourself to to the position of recognizing that you're nothing and only through Jesus and accepting his forgiveness and forgiving each other would you have any worth for you to be even lovable so that's 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 christianity you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free too sexy to show most of it here on youtube we draw muhammad hindu goddesses sexy hijabi art jesus mother mary japanese god greek gods and much much more click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art